Hello, this is Ryan Phelan with the Epic Phelan Podcast. This week we have with us Visha Lu. She's the most adorable freak in the world, weirdo by day, and founder of Lou Lucha, a wrestling priority show that you must check out. All right, I'm Ryan Phelan, and this is the Epic Phelan Podcast. Today I have with me Visha Lu. Hello. Visha Lu, how do you do? Oh, you know, I'm pretty good. <laughs> that's, that's good. So I have you in today because you are relatively well-known. I mean, not just Calgary-wide, but, you know, probably worldwide, would you say? I would say a few people know who I am. Okay. So <laughs> so tell me, tell me all about you. Ooh. Well, I was thinking that at work today. I was like, oh my goodness, how am I going to talk about myself forever? As I'm literally talking to my clients about myself <laughs> forever. But yeah, where do I begin? I might be wrong, but yeah. is this a latex modeling? Um, like, yes, that's what I started with was modeling. And then I moved into circus and then more acting and stuff. And then with my performing, that's when I started making latex clothes for my own performances. And then I made it for friends and then other people. And then it became another job, like all my things. And it's amazing. I love latex. Nice. And costuming. (laughs) So not so much, I would say, modeling. Yeah, modeling. (laughs) Like, I need to take photos to promote my shows and stuff. But otherwise, I don't really model anymore with other photographers or anything. Just my husband. He's the one that does majority all my stuff. He is a great photographer, by the way. I joke that that's why I married him. (laughs) You mentioned shows. So two things kind of like piqued my curiosity here. So you said you have your shows and you also mentioned circus. Yes, I ran away to the circus probably 13 years ago. Yeah, I, ooh, okay. So I was at a circus show. It was the first Fringe Festival here. Okay. And I met this guy, and he was doing the body painting, and I was doing the hair for the body painting stuff. Okay. And he kept on saying how he had a circus show and that we should go watch it. But it was always at the same time I was working either at the hair salon where I work at or doing hair at this. So it wasn't until the very last day we could finally go and see his show. And I'm waiting to watch, and people are coming up to me, and they're like, oh, so you're performing tonight? I'm like, mm. no. And they're like, uh, well, then why are you dressed that way? I'm like, I don't know, because it's a Tuesday. <laughs> so I figured if I look like I belong in the circus, <laughs> maybe I do. So after the show, I ran up to Peter and I was like, hi, can I run away to the circus? And he said, yes. So I did. And I found out he had a circus school. <laughs> I didn't know that. I didn't even know that they were in town. I thought they were just passing through. Nope. They were in town. He had a circus school. I went there. I learned contortion. And well, first, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Oh, yes. So he said, yes, I could run away to the circus. And then his second question was, or not, that would be now, the first like, question. Is this like circus like, like with like tigers and elephants? No, and no, no, no. People circus. People oh, circus. Oh, it's a people circus. People circus. Yeah. So after he said, Yes, I could run away to the circus. He said, do you have any talent? (laughs) No. (laughs) No, I don't. So I went to the circus school, and we tried out a few things. At first, it was more like aerial type stuff. And then I saw a picture of this girl doing contortion on the wall. And I was like, oh, that'd be so cool if I could do that. And he's like, why don't you do that then? I'm like, "Uh, because I can't touch my toes. And he's oh. like, yeah, it's called training, stupid. I'm like, cool. Let's train to be a contortionist. So, yeah, I did that every Wednesday. And in the beginning, it was still very, like, a hobby thing that I did. Like, oh, this is fun. And I still trained hard. Like, I trained yeah. every single day. But it was still very, nah, nah, nah. I don't know what to do in my life. Let's do this. And then before I was a contortionist at all, he asked me to be a part of the troupe. Because even to this day... I'm not going to lie. I'm not the most talented person, but I'm entertaining. But you're entertaining. You have personality, kid. Uh, personality. <laughs> so yeah, he asked me to be a part of the troupe way before I should have been on stage and stuff. So I added to other people's shows and did things. And then a little under a year from when I started Contortion is when I did my first stage show all on my own. And I fell off my podium and I smashed my head. And my mom was so proud of me. She's like, that's my baby girl. Uh I would pretend I didn't know me, but that's okay. 
Oh, at first with the troupe, they didn't like when I started performing in bars and at like fetish shows and alternative things, which is very me. If I'm a weirdo by day, I'm certainly going to be a weirdo by night. Yes. Don't know why you thought that was going to change. So, yeah, they asked me to stop doing the fetish shows because it misrepresented us as a troupe. So I dropped out of their troupe. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. And then I left the circus with Lady O for a while, and we performed as a duo. And then she left and did her own thing for a bit. And that's when I became really, like, my style that I'm known for. And so uh, what, is, what is the style that you are known for? I'm very Disney and horror. I don't know. The way I sum myself up is I'm the most adorable freak in the world. I'll turn your nightmares into wet dreams. And, yeah, I guess... People say give them fear erections. Ooh, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's that's a. <laughs> yeah, I always joke that like anybody can do the normal sexy thing. I like to spice it up. I like to confuse. You know. Yeah. Don't know how you feel about yourself after you watch one of my shows. <laughs> so where where are your shows typically? Better shows is what I'm mostly hired for. Also conventions and just other burlesque shows okay because with burlesque they have the variety acts so i'm the variety <laughs> yeah i would horror say horror mo- or yes horror con i've been a part of every single one here oh really i'm so excited for this year it's year 10 oh yeah i just had nine days off of work and i was working on our costumes for it so what are some of your favorite costumes that you've gone as stripe from gremlins that's I love Gremlins. Gremlins is such a great movie. That's a Christmas uh, movie too, isn't it? I know. It? <laughs> I was asking all my clients, like, oh, what's your favorite Christmas movie? And they're saying Christmas movies. And they're like, what's yours? I'm like, Gremlins. That's awesome. They're like, is that a Christmas movie? I'm like, uh, yeah. There's Christmas in it. It's totally, it's totally Christmas. It just has other focuses, but that's fine. So other, other than doing these shows and whatnot, you also have... Oh, yes. My Lube Lucha. Yes. <laughs> Which, ex- explain this. <laughs> so, I, yeah, I figured I didn't have enough jobs and hobbies in my life, so I thought I should add one more. Uh, okay. Yeah. I used to put on fetish shows called Crimson Events, and I did that for quite a number of years with my husband and this other couple. And life just got too busy, and so I stopped producing those shows and stuff. Just because out of the four of us, I was the one that talked to the performers the most and it just it became too much for me so i stopped that didn't do anything for about a year and then my friend rolando was gonna have a barbecue and i don't remember how it came up but i was like oh we should do lube wrestling in your backyard for your barbecue and he's like yes but i also think other people will want to see this and you should do it as a show and i was not wanting to do shows i just stopped doing shows like i didn't no. And so I was like, no, I just want to do it at like your barbecue. That's fine. He's like, can you please do one? Because I think people are going to want to see this. And I'm like, uh, all right, I'll do one. And I've now done 15. Oh, wow. And he was right. People do want to see it. So when did you start doing this? Uh, the uh, Blue Cha? I think five years ago, maybe. I can't remember. Okay. But yeah, so Lube Lucha, it is a wrestling parody show. Okay. It's a comedy, and you girls, oh, yes. I'm so bad at describing my show. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculousness. That's what it is. (laughs) I like making latex. I like dressing up people in latex. So all of my wrestlers, it's very like WWE-like, as in like they come out to their intro song, they have their persona and everything. Yeah. And... That's what I feel Lube Lucha really sets apart from the other type of lube shows and oil wrestling and stuff. Yeah. Because people are their character okay. and everything. And that's really what I focus on because that's my whole world. I love hair, makeup, and clothes. I love making costuming. And that's, that's it. And then they wrestle, wrestle in 10 gallons of lube. <laughs> and when I say wrestling... Um, uh, air quotes. Air quotes. Wrestling. You get points by motorboating, humping, and spanking. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's a very serious sport. Please take it seriously. It's, it's, it's totally 100% serious. Very serious. So, like the WWE, is it scripted? 
maybe. Uh, maybe. Uh, oh. <laughs> I have a storyline I need to stick to, <laughs> just like WWE. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Are the winners predetermined? And, and you could tell um, me to get out of town if you want on that one, or? Uh, it really depends. Okay. A lot of the time, if I have set winners, it's because I know of future shows that I want people in, and um. I need there to be the reason why. Yes. So I know I would say 99.9% of the people that come to the show do not care about the storyline or know about the storyline, <laughs> but I care about the storyline. <laughs> and that's what matters. Right. So some are, some aren't. I really just make it up. It's my show. I can do what I want. Yeah. Where would you have these? Recently for this last year, we had it at the Blind Beggar. Okay. Which is where the next one is. It's not until March 22nd. This is going to be a new show. It's called Lou Blue to Tryouts. And normally, whenever I have a new person, I do Facebook votes to have the new person. Okay. But I have grown so large that I have so many people now that want to be a part, which is amazing. So I did the first Facebook, narrowed it down to the top six, and then well, six girls and two guys. I'm, I'm introducing a guy match. Whoa. Yeah. It's been asked about too many times. I can't deny it anymore. Yeah. So, yes, six new girls, two new guys. Yeah, so it's going to be all new people, except for two of my old school girls that are going to show the ropes on how it's all done. <laughs> and then, yeah, so and then I can pick people more on their personality, how they are in the pool and everything, instead of just a picture on Facebook to pick them for a future. So this is the Lou Blucher tryouts. And then... That's back. March, March 22nd? Yes. Okay. Yes. And then the next one should be in May. I'm possibly moving to a new bar because we definitely have outgrown the beggar. So how many people would you say come and watch your shows? Uh, usually between 120 and 170. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. that's that's really good, actually. Yeah. So, and it's just the way that the pool is on the floor and stuff and the way sight lines are. I love being at the Blind Beggar, but sight lines kind of suck there. Yeah. So um, I have a new venue in mind. We're just settling dates and stuff. So, but the next one after should be in May. May, July, September, November. Ish yeah. area. Okay. And the November one is called Lubamania. 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 <laughs> and, <laughs> like WrestleMania. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> and the first one uh, was this past November, and we had Nadia White, which is this porn star from the States. I met her in Chicago. She was one of my dead girls for my show in Chicago. I just got along. She is ridiculousness, and I wanted ridiculousness. That's hey. That's there's nothing wrong with a bit of ridiculousness. And she was, and it was great. She also made out with like the whole front row, and <laughs> there you I, go. N- I don't think there might be like two seconds of her matches that I can post. Otherwise, the rest are not uh, safe. Not not safe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I I also wrestled her, and I legit was drowning in her boobs. Like, I couldn't <laughs> breathe, and I needed to actually stop. Like, I actually can't breathe. You are suffocating Just, me. So do you have, like, a, like, do you, like, tap out, or do you have, like, a, like a, I've like never a, had to do like a safe before. word or anything to... I've never even had to think about it. But there were just... She was suffocating me. Yeah. It was... De- like, I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> That's so crazy. So what? what is your persona? I'm still just, not just, but I'm Visha Lou, always. So at my shows, the Lou Bluchas, I first wrestled, and because of course, like, I put on the show because I want to wrestle in Lou. Yes. And stuff. But I can never win my matches. Like, I'm the vain, vindictive, bogus Visha and everything, but yeah. I can't also win my show. Yes, that would be, uh, like, yeah. That's a bit the, too much. The, the optics, the optics aren't too great. Much, right. Yeah. So at first, my hosts were comedians. And it was awesome. And I am not a comedian, but apparently I think I am. So I am now my host. But it makes more sense because it's my show and stuff. And not going to lie, I can say way more inappropriate stuff being female than any guy could. True. True enough. Yep. Because nothing about Lou Blucha is appropriate. <laughs> that's, <At all. laughs> that's That's fantastic. At all. And ooh, with the boys, because... They can't motorboat. Well, you can, but it's not the same. Yeah. No one's going to be drowning <laughs> yeah. in those boobs. But so their three points is humping, spanking, and teabagging. 
Oh, <laughs> that's that's incredible. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh man! And so the popularity has gotten quite big. Then it's 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 uh yeah. It's I've like, been to Vancouver twice with it. It's been at the Lethbridge Tattoo Convention. Edmonton has asked a lot, so I might. And then ooh, this guy in San Jose, he's wanted my show for a while too, and we got plans for that because he has his own brand of hot sauce, and so we're gonna make a match not with the hot sauce because that's, that's crazy. Oh, that's, yeah, that's dangerous. Crazy. You gotta worry about your but, eyes and right? all sorts of other. Places. No good, no good. <laughs> but we thought it'd be funny. Like, I made latex to look like the different flavors of his hot sauce, and then they battle it out to be the next Miss Hot and Saucy. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my God. <sighs> but, yeah. So, a, a question that I ask all my guests is, because we're in Calgary here, there's a high likelihood that you are not from Calgary. Are, uh, you, are you from Calgary? No. No, I am not. Okay, so where are you from? I originally I was born in Edmonton, but shh. I don't so was I. Okay. Yeah. You were safe. But I moved to Calgary very young. And then I moved away in grade one. Oh. I went to three schools in grade one. Oh really? On a side note, that's rude to do yeah. to a child. Thanks, uh, parents. That's tough, yeah. <sighs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, then we moved to Victoria, where I grew up there from grade one to grade twelve. And then oh. I moved back here, like, a year-ish after high school. Okay. So what, what brought you back here? My dad lives here. Oh, okay. So I was not planning on staying here at all. I just needed to leave Victoria. It was not the place for me. And I was like, eh, I'll be close to my dad for some point in time in my life. So I moved out here, and then I started working where I work, and I love my job. And then I met my husband, and yeah. And there it is. Yeah. I moved here in 2002. What do you like most about Calgary? Oh, nothing. I don't really care about Calgary. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> so what don't you like about Calgary? Let's, let's do that. I'm sure the city is lovely, but I'm a hermit. So I could really be anywhere in the world. It doesn't matter. There you go. I see the inside of my house, and I only go out when I'm performing. <laughs> Only with the lube and only with, um, yeah. only with Stripe. But, yep. um, compared to Victoria, a million times better. Really? I did not like Victoria. That's, you know what? It's funny because I know like I have all my artist friends and you know some of them. And a lot of people are like, oh, got to move out to Vancouver. Got to move out to Victoria. Got to you know, get to you know, where the arts are. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. And you're like shaking your head. You're like, no. No. Yeah. yeah. But granted, I was a gothy kid of the 90s yeah. in Victoria. Like, that didn't work out so well for me. Oh, yeah, because, yeah. Yeah, it is, no. Yeah, Calgary's not bad by any means. But I wouldn't say it's my favorite place. Where is your favorite place, then? I would say London, even though I don't actually like London either. It's way too people-y. <laughs> Says the hermit. I love London. Right. <laughs> But it's because my best friend, Raina Terror, lives there. Mm. And so I usually like places due to a person. Yeah. So I like London and Europe and any of that because I know if I'm going there, I get to see Raina. Aww. But, and that's why I liked here because my dad was here. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And Calgary produced a Jeremy. That's my husband. So it can't be that can't. bad of a city. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> So, so shows coming up. So you have the big, the big one is going to be the one in March. Yes. Okay. I'm performing in Edmonton, February fifteenth. Ooh, February fifteenth in Edmonton. Okay. Yes. At Starlight Room. I believe yep. that's what that place is called. Yep. Right? The yes. upstairs. Yep. Yeah. 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 It's a fetish show. Okay. I don't know what the actual fetish show name is for that. I just know it's a fetish show. On February 15th at the Starlight Room. Yes. There we go. And I'm doing a new show that's based off of American Psycho. Oh, cool. And I love Patrick Bateman. Do you have business cards for that? No. <laughs> you totally should. I should. <laughs> hmm. hmm. Thanks. No problem. On that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's really, really cool. So before I leave you here... What would you like to promote? Like, So we've talked about your shows that are coming up, and do you have a website? I do. Vishalu.com. Vishalu.com. Yep. I'm the only 
well, uh, I think there's some fake accounts, but I'm generally the only Visha Lou in the world, so it's easy to find me. I'm on Instagram mostly, but also Facebook, my website, that I kind of forget to update from time to time, but it should say the things that I'm doing on that website. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'd say mostly. If you like wearing latex and you like costuming, please let me make your outfits. Because it is my everything. I love crafting so much. Over this break, I made an Ursula outfit, an Elvira outfit, Elmira, working on my alien, Patrick Bateman, and the nine new outfits for Lou Blucha. That's fantastic. And that was me going slow. Oh, wow. I also did two photo shoots. I don't have a life, but I love what I do. Do you want? And if you love what you do, then that's, that's the best thing you oh, want. Oh, I guess on. I have a life. That's, I'm not dead. Yeah. <laughs> that was weird for me to say. I don't have a life. <laughs> no, I kill people. I'm not the dead one. <laughs> you, you are definitely a card for sure. <laughs> I don't have a social life. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> All right, on Visha. It was a pleasure having you. And Thanks it'd be for having me. Great to have you back at some point. Yeah, yeah. All right. And until I see you next time, stay epic. I will. Thanks for listening to Epic Phelan. If you like what you hear, be sure to subscribe and give me a five star rating on Apple Podcasts. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Real Ryan Phelan. And visit my website at thecalgaryrealestateguy.com. Until next time, stay epic.